Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be setting up the rest of the limb setup for part two of the basic IK implementation and procedural animation. We're also going to be touching the AI rollerball code in order to make it work properly with the new limb setup. So already pretty much everything's already set up in the cultist body from the previous video. So we'll just go ahead and dive right into the basic enemy navigation agent. There's a couple of changes that we need to do here. So first off, you'll notice we have this desired velocity up here as we're no longer directly affected the velocity from here we need to be able to read that from elsewhere so we do need to go ahead and assign that but let's start out at the top of the physics process and put a little check in here if the player targets null we want to return this just lets us test the ai and leave them in one location and not have them chasing around the player for testing purposes and then also instead of the constant force being a vector 3.0 if we've reached the target then we're going to go ahead and set the desired velocity as a vector 3.0 as well as instead of having a targeted velocity here we're just going to go ahead and set that to the desired velocity and that calculation will suffice us for the time being. We can pretty much leave everything else here alone. We've already set it up properly in the limb placement controller so we can hop on over to limb.cs and we can get started here. We're going to be doing a lot of changes so let's start with our exports. First off we're going to go ahead and have a node 3d for the limb ik container. That's going to be the container of the targets as well as a reference to the skeleton using the skeleton 3d node type and a reference to the skeleton ik 3d as a limb ik solver. Next up we're going to go ahead and create two offsets. These offsets are going to be used for the magnet that's which way the elbow or knee respectively points and the target offset for the actual placement of the feet on the ground. The target offset is really just going to be able to bump up those back feet a little bit the mesh of the feet actually clips through the ground if we don't have one and then the magnet offset and the target offset are both going to be in the local space of the torso so be aware of that when modifying them we can also go ahead and create a variable for the allowed IK inaccuracies. This is just going to make sure that if we can't physically reach a location with our arm, we go ahead and readjust that IK target. We are also going to create two floats that are ranges between 0 and 1, and these are going to be the enemy body origin velocity bias as well as the desired velocity bias. These are going to come into factor later with the origin velocity bias adjusting the origin of the velocity change when we impulse against the rollerball from the hand towards the torso. So one would be the torso, zero would be the hand, and point eight is mostly towards the torso. This just helps us stop the rollerball from just spinning in place. If you just put it on the hand, sometimes that happens. Then also the enemy body desired velocity bias is just going to be whether when we add an impulse, how far we're leaning towards what the ideal direction we want to move is, and how far we're leaning towards just in the general direction the arm is pointed. This way we can have a little bit of randomness to our movements. Now, besides that, we did go ahead and set the currently traveling to a public Boolean in the last episode. So first up, let's go ahead and create a new function for set IK targets. And this will be called in the ready function as well as in the process function. Now, down below the ready function, we are also going to go ahead and start up the limb IK solver. And we're going to set the IK bone tip ID to the find bone from the limb IK solver tip bone. But we don't actually have a variable for that. I forgot to add a variable. So we're just going to add that variable. Now down here in the set IK targets, we can go ahead and start off with the magnet. Now the magnet basically works in some IK solvers. It's referred to as a pole. Here in Godot, it's referred to as a magnet. So first off, we're going to take the lim IK container, that's the target location of the hand or the leg, and we're going to lerp it between there and the global position of the enemy body, that's the roller ball. And we're gonna lerp it just by 50%. This way we just get somewhere in between the hand and the chest is generally around where the elbow or knee would be. Then we're going to add to it the limb IK magnet offset multiplied by the global transform dot basis of the chest target. This is just going to put it in local space. So if the torso is upside down and we want to go above the torso with, say, the knee or something, we want that to be below the torso in world space. So that should take care of that. We can go ahead and go down to the limb IK container and set its global position to the current target, which we've already been calculating previously, and add to that the limb IK target offset multiplied by, once again, the global transform dot basis of the chest target container. And that's just going to get us a little bit of an offset off of the ground. In the hands case, I actually move the hands down a little bit. In the feet, I move them up a little bit. It's just based off of whatever your model looks best. And I'm going to go ahead and comment out that draw point up there as we won't need that, as well as the debug Bezier curve. 
Now, next up, we're going to go ahead and create a new variable called new look at position. This is just going to be the direction we want the hands or the feet to look at. So first off, we're going to take the global position of the limb IK container, and we're going to add to it the vector from the enemy body towards the limb IK container dot normalized. This is just going to get a point away from the body from the location of the hand or the foot as the case may be. Then we're just going to go ahead and set its world Y axis to the Y axis of the hand or foot. And finally, we're going to go ahead and use a look at function. And the look at function is going to be a little bit more complex than normal. We're going to be looking at based off of the basis of the chest target container. And we're going to multiply that by the new look at position, subtracting the current position from it and get the Y axis. And we're going to use the absolute value of this. Basically, we're just going to use this to check to see if the look at vector is directly up in relation to the chest target container or directly down. And the reason why is we're going to be using using its up axis or back axis as the up vector in the look at function. That way, when we're standing on the ceiling, the hands will be slapped flat on the ceiling with their up vector being down in this case. And that's pretty much all we need for the set IK targets. Now down here in initialize step, we're also going to make another addition. So first off, we're checking to see if the current curve, this is the curve we're leaving as we create a new curve, hit a surface. So it was landing on a surface and the enemy bodies dot desired velocity is not vector 3.0. So basically we are sitting our hand on the ground and we also do want to move in a direction. Then we're going to go ahead and create a new vector three, which is going to be the movement direction that we want to move in. So we're going to take the new curve dot target location. That's the new location that we're moving to and subtract it from the current position to get a vector in the direction we're moving the hand or the leg. Then we're going to lerp that towards the desired velocity using the enemy body desired velocity bias as that controller variable. This way we can actually make the arm, if it's just reaching out in a direction using a little bit of noise or something, we can make the arm pull the AI sideways and things like that if we wanted to decrease this bias. Later on, as we make the complexity of the movement a little bit better, then we're probably also going to decrease this bias so that we have a bit more randomness in our AI. Finally, we can go ahead and call the kickoff velocity function on the controller using the foot vector dot normalized. And for the position, we're going to be taking the limb IK container dot global position, and we're going to lerp that to the enemy body based off of the origin velocity bias. This is just going to be, in, like I said, probably 0.8 for the time being. That way, the origin of the velocity is somewhere in the bicep region of the AI. And that's pretty much it for the initialized step. We do need to go down here to the get new curve and we need to make one adjustment. We're going to create a new Boolean and we're going to call this too far from target. And basically what this is going to do is use the skeleton global position of the IK tip bone. So the hand or the foot, and we're going to set check the distance between that and the actual desired target location. And if that distance is greater than the allowed IK inaccuracy, we're going to say it's too far from the target. And what this basically means is that the IK system System, the limb.cs is wanting to move the hand to a position that the arm physically cannot reach. And if that's the case, then we do want to go ahead and update the curve. We also want to go ahead and set the hit surface to false. This way, when the hand cannot reach the target location, say it was on the wall or something, and it's just too far from the AI for it to reach, then it's not going to get any physics velocity from that position when it moves its hand. This way, it behaves a bit more realistic. And as we move forward with making the movements of the hands more complex and more realistic than the not being able to pull off of a surface that the hand visually cannot reach makes it much more convincing. So let's go ahead and build that code and we can hop back over to the editor. All right, and we're back in the editor. We do have some variables to set up here. I'll just show you how to do one and then we'll extrapolate. The limb IK container is going to be these containers down here at the bottom. And the skeleton, of course, is the skeleton 3D with the limb IK solver being whichever one this specific limb is referencing. So a 10 in the X is off to the right. So we're going to be using this anytime for right hand or right feet. And then I also go ahead and bump up the elbow to a 10. This just makes it so that the elbow kicks up a lot. And five in the Z axis goes ahead and makes that magnet behind us. I also did go ahead and add a negative 0.1 to the target offset as the hands kind of floated above the surface if I did not do that. And I go ahead and set that down to 0.1 and the enemy body origin velocity bias to 0.7. Everything else can pretty much stay the same. And I'm going to go ahead and go through the rest. The only difference being with the feet on the feet variables, I did go ahead and set the Z axis to negative 10. This means that the knees are always bending forward, which obviously is ideal.
All right, so my audio actually broke there, and I didn't realize until a couple days later, so I'm re-recording this several days after the previous bit, but I'm going to kind of pick up where it left off. I was setting up the variables here in all the limbs, and I kind of skipped through all of that. I have the variables set as they are. I did go ahead and finish up the targets selection, and I did also go ahead and set the IK targets to the targets within the containers. Now, the rollerball itself, as you can see it doesn't require a player target anymore however i did go ahead and create a new script called set target which exists at the top of the hierarchy of the cultists just to make it a little bit easier to go ahead and set that target in runtime in the scene so i went ahead and dropped it in and we can go ahead and see how that looks in game now, as you can see, this is obviously not perfect, but he does crawl around fairly effectively. And if we go ahead and shoot him, we can throw him around and he looks a little bit like a frog. And that's pretty much it for this week. Now, next week, we are going to go ahead and be working on the hand placement, getting it looking a little bit more realistic as it swings through the air. I'm going to have the arc of the Bezier curve move away from the torso, as well as a little bit more work on making the torso itself rotate and act a little bit more natural in the environment. So that's all coming next week but for this week this is going to do it just fine we will revisit all of this in the coming weeks and polish it up as we go forward and it's just going to kind of be an iterative process so we may actually step away from the ai week after next and work on the hands i do want to rework the animation and maybe work in a little bit of ik on the actual aim of the pistol so the pistol's aim can be affected by the stress levels and things like that of the character as well as the flashlight making it a little bit more dynamic but we'll get to all of that later thank you all for watching as always i hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.